This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida, on February 9th, 2006. The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, edited by D. Lang Purvis. This reading is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems. The original text contains poems by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor. To view these notes, please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of The Canterbury Tales. THE MAN OF LAW'S TALE THE PROLOGUE Our host saw well that the bright sun, the arc of his artificial day, had run the fourth part and half an hour more, and though he were not deep expert in lore, he wist it was the eight-and-twenty day of April that is messenger to May and saw well that the shadow of every tree was in its length the same quality that was the body erect that caused it, and therefore by the show he took his wit that Phoebus, which that shone so clear and bright degrees, was five and forty clomb on height, and for that day, as in that latitude, it was ten of the clock, he gan conclude, and suddenly he plight his horse about. Lordlings, quoth he, I warn you all this rout. The fourth party of this day is gone now, for the love of God and of St. John, lose no time as far forth as ye may, lordlings. The time wasteth night and day, and steals from us what privily sleeping, and what through negligence in our waking, as doth the stream that turneth never again, descending from the mountain to the plain, well might Senec, and many a philosopher, bewail time more than gold in coffer, for loss of chattels may recovered be, but loss of time shendeth us, quoth he. It will not come again without dread, no more than will Malkin's maidenhead, when she hath lost it in her wantonness. Let us not mould thus in idleness. Sir man of law, quoth he, so ye have bliss, tell us a tale anon as forward is. Ye be submitted through your free assent to stand in this case at my judgment, Acquit you now, and hold your behest, that ye have done your devoir in the least. Host, quoth he, de par Dieu j'ai a santé. To break forward is not mine intent, behest is debt, and I would hold it fain, all my behest, I can no better sane, for such law as a man gives another white, he should himself usen it by right. Thus will our text, but natheless certain, I can write now no thrifty tale sayin, but Chaucer, though he can but lewdly on meters and on rhyming craftily, hath said them in such English as he can of old time, as knoweth many a man. And if he have not said them, lave, brother, in one book, he hath said them in another. For he hath told of lovers up and down more than Ovid made of mention in his epistole that be full old. Why should I tell them, since they be told? In youth he made of Seax and Alcyon, and since then he hath spoke of every one those noble wives and lovers eke, whoso will his large volume speak, called The Saint's Legend of Cupid. There may he see the large wounds wide of Lucrece, and of Babylon Thisbe, the sword of Dido for the false Inay, the tree of Phyllis for her Demophon, 
the plaint of Diane and of Hermione, of Ariadne and Hypsipyle, the barren isle standing in the sea, the drowned Leander for his fair hero, the tears of Helen and eke the woe of Briseis and Ladomia, the cruelty of the Queen Medea, thy little children hanging by the halls for thy Jason, that was of love so false. Hypermestra, Penelope, Alcest, your wifehood he commandeth with the best, but certainly no word writeth he of thick wick example of Canasse that loved her own brother sinfully. Of all such cursed stories I say fie, or else of Tyrius Apollonius, and how the cursed king Antiochus bereft his daughter of her maidenhead, that is so horrible a tale to read, when he threw her upon the pavement, and therefore he, of full advisement, would never write in none of his sermons of such unkind abominations. Nor will I none rehearse, if I may, but of my tale, how shall I do this day? Me here loath to be likened doubtless to muses that men call Pyrides, metamorphoses, what I mean. But natheless I reck not a bean, though I come after him with hawkbake, I speak in prose, and let him rhymes make. And with that word he with a sober cheer began his tale, and said, as ye shall hear. So ends the prologue to the Man of Law's Tale. THE TALE O scathful harm, condition of poverty, with thirst, with cold, with hunger so confounded, to ask help thee shameth in thine heart, if thou none ask, so sore art thou e wounded. That very need unwrappeth all thy wound hid, Maugre thine head, thou must for indignance, Or steal, or beg, or borrow thy dispense. Thou blamest Christ, and sayest full bitterly, He mid-separateth Richard's temporal, Thy neighbor thou whitest sinfully, And sayest thou hast too little, and he hath all, Parfait, sayest thou, some time he reckon shall, When that his tale shall brennen in the glade, For he not helped the needful in their need. Hearken what is the sentence of the wise, Better to die than to have indigence. Thyself, neighbor, will thee despise, If thou be poor, farewell thy reverence. Yet of the wise man take this sentence, All the days of poor men be wick, Beware, therefore, ere thou come to that prick. If thou be poor, thy brother hated thee, And all thy friends flee from thee, alas. O rich merchants, full of wealth be ye, O noble, prudent folk, as in this case, your bags be not filled with Amby's ace, But with six sank that runneth for your chance, And Christenmas will merry be ye dance. Ye seek land and sea for your winnings, As wise folk ye knowen all the estate of Regnes, Ye be fathers of tidings and tales, both of peace and of debate. I were right now of tailors desolate, But that a merchant, gone in many a year, Me taught a tale, which ye shall after hear. In Syria will whom dwelt a company Of chapmen rich, and thereto sad and true, Clothes of gold and satins rich of hue, That wide ware sent their spicery, their chaffare was so thriftily and so new that every white had dainty to chaffar with them and eke to sell them their ware. Now fell it that the masters of that sort have sharpened them to Rome for to wend, 
were it for chapmanhood or for disport, none other messages would they thither send, but come themselves to Rome. This is the end, and in such place as thought them a vantage for their intent, they took their herbigage. Sojourned have these merchants in that town a certain time as fell to their pleasance, and so befell that in the excellent renown of the emperor's daughter, Dame Constance, reported was, with every circumstance, unto these Syrian merchants in such wise, from day to day, as I shall you devise. This was the common voice of every man, our emperor of Rome, God him see, a daughter hath that since the world began to reckon as well her goodness and beauty was never such another as is she. I pray to God in honour her sustain, and would she wear of all Europe the queen. In her is high beauty without pride, and youth without greenhood or folly. To all her works virtue is her guide, Humbleness hath slain in her all tyranny. She is the mirror of all courtesy, Her heart a very chamber of holiness, Her hand minister of freedom for almness. And all this voice was sooth, as God is true, But now to purpose let us turn again. These merchants have done freight their shippes new, and when they have this blissful maiden seen home to Syria, then they went full fain, and did their needs, as they have done your, and lived in weal, I can you say no more. Now fell it that these merchants stood in grace of him that was the Sudan of Syria, for when they came from any stranger place, he would of his benigny courtesy make them good cheer, and busily espy tidings of sundry regnes for to leer the wonders that they might see or hear. Among his other things specially these merchants have told him of Dame Constance, so great nobleness in earnest so royally, that this Sudan hath caught so great pleasance to have her figure in his remembrance, that all his lust and all his busy cure was for to love her while his life may dure. Paraventure in the like large book which that men call the heaven ye written was with stars, when that he his birth it took, that he for love should have his death, alas, for in the stars clearer than in the glass is written God wrought, whoso could it read, the death of every man without a dread. In stars many a winter there before was writ the death of Hector, Achilles, of Pompey, Julius, ere they were born, the strife of Thebes and of Hercules, of Samson, Turnius, and of Socrates, the death but men's witties be so dull that no wight can well read it at the full. This Sudan for his privy counsel sent, and shortly of this matter for the pace he hath to them declared his intent, and told them certain, but he might have grace to have Constance within a little space. He was but dead, and charged them in high to shape for his life some remedy. Diverse men diverse things said, and arguments they casten up and down, many a subtle reason forth they laid. They speak of magic and abusion, but finally, as in conclusion, they cannot see in that none advantage, nor in no other way, save marriage. 
Then saw they therein such difficulty by way of reason for to speak all plain, because that there was such diversity between their both laws, and they sayen, they trow that no Christian prince would fain widen his child under our law's sweet, that us was given by Mahud our prophet. And he answered, Rather than I lose Constance, I will be christened, doubtless. I must be hers. I may none other choose. I pray you, hold your arguments in peace. Save my life, and be not reckless, to get to her that hath my life in cure, for in this woe I may not long endure. What needeth greater dilatation, I say, by treaty and ambassadry, and by the Pope's meditation, and all the church, and all the chivalry, that in destruction of mametry, and in increase of Christ's law dear, they be accorded, so as ye may hear? How that the Sudan and his baronage and all his lieges shall be christened be, and shall have constance in marriage, and certain gold, I not what quality, and hereto find they sufficient surety, the same accord is sworn on either side. Now, fair constance, almighty God thee guide. Now would some men waiten, as I guess, that I should tell in all the purveyance, the which the emperor of his noblesse hath shapen for his daughter, Dame Constance. Well may men know that so great ordinance may no man tellen in a little clause, as was arrayed for so high a cause. Bishops, be sharpen with her for to wend, lordes, ladies, and knights of renown, and other folk enough, this is the end, and notified is throughout all the town that every wight with great devotion should pray to Christ that he this marriage receive in gree and speed this voyage. The day is common of her departing. I say the woeful, fatal day is come, that there may be no longer tarrying, but forward they them dressen all and some. Constance, that was with sorrow all o'ercome, full pale arose and dressed her to wend, for well she saw there was no other end. Alas, what wonder it is, though she wept, that shall be sent to a strange nation from friends that so tenderly her kept, and to be bound under subjection of one, she knew not his condition, husbands be all good, and have been of yore, that no wives, I dare say no more. Father, she said, thy wretched child Constance, thy younger daughter, fostered up so soft, and you, my mother, my sovereign pleasance, over all thing outtaken Christ on loft. Constance, your child, her recommendeth oft unto your grace, for I shall to Siri, nor shall I ever see you more with I. Alas, unto the barbarous nation I must anon, since, if that is your will, but Christ, that star for our redemption, so give me grace his hestus to fulfill. I, wretched woman, no force, though I spill, women are born to thraldom and penance, and to be under manna's governments. I trow at Troy when Pyrrhus break the wall, or Ilion burnt, or Thebes the city, nor at Rome, for the harm through Hannibal that Romans hath the vanquished Timas three, was heard such tender weeping for pity, 
as in the chamber was for her parting, but forth she must, whether she weep or sing. O first a moving cruel firmament, with thy diurnal sway, that crowdest I, and hurlest all from east till occident, that naturally would hold another way, thy crowding set in the heaven, in such array, at the beginning of this fierce voyage, that cruel Mars hath slain this marriage. Unfortunate ascendant torturous, of which the Lord is helpless, fallen, alas, out of his angle into the darkest house, O Mars, O Atziar, as in this case, O feeble moon, unhappy is thy pace, thou knittest thee where thou art not received, where thou art well, from thenest art thou weaved. Imprudent emperor of Rome, alas, was there no philosopher in all thy town? Is no time bet than other in such case? Of voyage is there none election, namely to folk of high condition? Not when a root is of a birth, ye know? Alas, we be too lewd or too slow. To ship was brought this woeful fair maid solemnly with every circumstance. Now Jesus Christ be with you all, she said. There is no more but farewell, fair Constance. She pained her to make good countenance. And forth I let her sail in this manner, and turn I will again to my matter. The mother of the Sudan, well of vices, espied hath her son's plain intent, how he will leave his old sacrifices, and right anon she for her counsel sent, and they become to Noah what she meant, and when assembled was this folks in fear, she sat her down, and said, as ye shall hear, Lordes, she said, ye knowen every one how that my son in point is for to leet the holy laws of our Alacron, given by God's messenger Mahomet. But one avow to great God I hate. Life shall rather out of my body start than Mahomet's law go out of mine heart. What should us tighten of this new law, but thraldom to our bodies and penance, and afterward in hell to be ye draw? For we reigned Mahomet our creance, but, Lordes, will ye make an assurance, as I shall say, assenting to my lore, and I shall make us safe for evermore. They sworn and assented every man to live with her, and die, and by her stand, and every one in the best wise he can, to strengthen her, shall all his friendes fan. And she hath his emprise taken in hand, which ye shall hear, that I shall devise, and to them all she spake right in this wise. We shall first feign us christendom to take. Cold water shall not grieve us but a light, And I shall such a feast and revel make, That, as I trow, I shall the Sudan quite, For, though his wife be christened ne'er so white, She shall have need to wash away the red, Though she a font of water with her lead. O Sudaness, root! of iniquity, virago thou, Semiramis the second, O serpent under femininity, like to the serpent deep in hell bound, O feigned woman, all that may confound virtue and innocence, though thy malice is bred in thee, as nest of every vice. O Satan envious, since the like day, that thou wert chased from our heritage, well knowest thou to woman the old way, thou madest Eve to bring us in servage, 
Thou wilt fordo this Christian marriage, Thine instrument so, well away the while, Makest thou of women, when thou wilt beguile. This Sudanus, whom I thus blame and warre, Led privily her counsel go their way. Why should I in this tale longer tarry? She rode unto the Sudan on a day, And said him that she would renigh her lay, And Christendom of priestes handes fong, Repenting her she heathen was so long. Beseeching him to do her that honour, That she might have the Christian folk to feast, To please them I will do my labour, the Sudan said, I will do it at your heast, And kneeling thanked her for that request. So glad he was he wist not what to say, And kissed her son, and home she went her way. Arrived be these Christian folk to land in Syria with a great solemn rout, and hastily this Sudan sent his son for first to his mother and all the realm about, and said his wife had come out of doubt, and prayed them to ride again the queen, the honour of his regne to sustain. Great was the press, and rich was the array of Syrians and Romans met in fair. The mother of the Sudath rich and gay received her, with all so glad a cheer as any mother might her daughter dear, and to the next city there beside a soft pace solemnly they ride. Not trow I the triumph of Julius, of which that Lucan maketh such a boast, was royaler or more curious than was the assembly of this blissful boast, but, O oh, this scorpion, this wicked ghost, the Sudaness, for all her flattering cast under this full mortally to sting. The Sudan came himself soon after this, so royally that wonder is to tell, and welcomed her with all joy and bliss, and thus in mirth and joy I let them dwell. The fruit of his matter is that I tell. When the time came, men thought it for the best, that rebels stint, and men go to their rest. The time is come that this old Sudaness ordained hath the feast of which I told, and to the feast the Christian folk them dress in general, yea, both young and old. There may men feast, and royalty behold, and dainties more than I can you devise, but all too dear they bought it ere they rise. O sudden woe that ever art successor to worldly bliss, Sparent is with bitterness, the end of our joy, our worldly labor, Woe occupies the fine of our gladness. Hearken this counsel for thy sickerness, Upon thy glade days have in thy mind The unware woe of harm that comes behind. For shortly, for to tell it at a word, The Sudan and the Christians, every one, Were all too hewn and sicked at the board. But it was only Dame Constance alone, This old Sudaness, this accursed crone, Had with her friends done this accursed deed, For she herself would all the country lead. Nor there was Syrian that was converted, That of the council of the Sudan wot, That was not all too hewn, ere he asserted, And Constance have they ta'en anon for tot, And in a ship all steerless, God wot, They have her set, and bid her learn to sail Out of Syria againward to Itale. A certain treasure that she thither lad, And soon to say of victual great plenty, There have her given, and clothes eke she had, 
and forth she sailed in the salty sea. O oh, my Constance, full of benignity, O oh, emperor's young daughter dear, he that is lord of fortune be thy steer. She blessed herself, and with full piteous voice unto the cross of Christ thus said she, O oh, dear, O oh, wilful altar, holy cross, red of the Lamb's blood, full of pity, that washed the world from old iniquity, me from the fiend, and from his claws keep, that day that I shall drenchen in the deep. Victorious tree, protection of the true, that only worthy were for to bear the king of heaven, with his woundes new, the white lamb that hurt was with a spear, Flemmer of fiends out of him, and her on which thy limbs fully extend, me keep, and give me might my life to mend. Years and days floated this creature throughout the sea of Greece unto the strait of Maroc, as it was her aventure on many a sorry meal now may she bait. After her death full often may she wait, ere that the wild waves will her drive unto the place thereas she shall arrive. Men mighten ask why she was not slain, eke at the feast who might her body save, and I answer to that demand again who saved Daniel in the horrible cave, where every white save he, master or knave, was with the lion threat, ere he a start, no white but God that he bare in his heart. God list to shew his wonderful miracle in her, that we should see his mighty works. Christ, which that is to him harm trickle, by certain means oft, as he knows clerks, doth thing for certain end, that full dirk is to man's wit, that for our ignorance ne cannot know his prudent purveyance. Now since she was not at the feast, ye slaw, who kept her from drowning in the sea, who kept Jonas from the fish's maw, till he was sprouted up at Nineveh, well men may know it was no white, but he that kept the Hebrew people from drowning, with dry feet throughout the sea passing. Who bade the four spirits tempest that the power have to annoy land and sea, both north and south, and also west and east, annoy neither sea nor land nor tree? Soothly the commander of that was he that kept the tempest I this woman kept, as well when she awoke as when she slept. Where might this woman meet and drink a have, three year and more, how lasted her vitality? Who fed the Egyptian Mary in the cave, or in the desert? No white but Christ, son Fei. Five thousand folk it was as great marvail with loaves and five and fishes too to feed. God sent his foisson at her great need. She drived forth into our ocean, throughout our wildest sea, until at the last under a hold that Nempen I not can, far in Northumberland the wave her cast, and in the sand her ship sticked so fast that thenness it would not in all a tide the will of Christ was that she should abide. The constable of the castle did down fare to see this wreck, and all the ship he sought, and found this weary woman full of care. He found also the treasure that she brought, in her language mercy she besought, the life out of her body for to twin her to deliver of woe that she was in. A manner Latin corrupt was her speech, but all gate thereby she was understood, the constable, when him list no longer seech, this woeful woman brought he to the land. 
She kneeled down and thanked God's son, but what she was she would no man to say, for fair nor foul, although that she should day. She said she was so mazed in the sea that she forgot her mind by her truth. The constable had of her so great pity, and eke his wife, that they wept for Ruth. She was so diligent without sleuth to serve and please every one in that place that all her loved that looked in her face. The constable and Dame Ermelgild his wife were pagans, and that country everywhere but Hermelgild loved Constance as her life and Constance had so long sojourned there in orisons with many a bitter tear, till Jesus had converted through his grace Dame Hermelgild constableness of that place. In all that land no Christians drust rout, all Christian folk had fled from that country, though pagans that conquered all about the plagues of the north by land and sea to Wales had fled, the Christianity of old Britons dwelling in this isle, there was their refuge for the meanwhile. But yet ne'er Christian Britons so exiled that there ne'er some which in their privity honored Christ and heathen folk beguiled, and nigh the castle such there dwelled three, and one of them was blind, and might not see, but it were with silk iron of his mind, with which men may see when they are blind. Bright was the sun as in a summer's day, for which the constable and his wife also, and Constance have ye take the right away, Toward the sea a furlong way to go, To playen and to roam to and fro, And in their walk this blind man they met, Crooked and old, with even fast yet. In the name of Christ called this blind Briton, Dame Ermelgild, give me my sight again. This lady waxed afraid of that sound, Lest that her husband, Shortly for to sayn would her for Jesus Christ's love have slain, Till Constance made her hold, and bade her wirch the will of Christ, As daughter of holy church. The constable waxed abashed out of that sight, and said, What amounteth all this fair? Constance answered, Sir, it is Christ's might that helpeth folk out of the friend's snare. And so far forth she gan our law declare, That she, the constable, ere that it were eve, Converted, and on Christ made him believe. This constable was not lord of the place of which I speak, There as he Constance fanned, but kept it strongly many a winter's space under Allah, king of Northumberland, that was full wise and worthy of his hand against the scots, as men may well hear. But turn I will again to my matter. Satan, that ever us waiteth to beguile, saw of Constance all her perfection, and cast anon how he might quiet her while, and made a young knight that dwelleth in that town love her so hot of foul affection that verily him thought that he should spill, but he of her might ones have his will. He wooed her, but it availed not. She would no sin by no way, and for despite he compassed his thought to make her a shameful death to-day. He waiteth when the constable is away, and privily upon a night he crept in her Milgilda's chamber while she slept. Weary, forewaked, in her orisons, sleepeth constant, and her Melgild also. 
This night, through Satan's temptation, All softly is to the bed ye go, And cut the throat of Amelgild in two, And laid the bloody knife by Dame Constance, And went his way, there God gave him mischance. Soon after came the constable home again, and eke Allah that king was of this land, and saw his wife dispiteously slain, for which full oft he wept and wrung his hand, and ill the bed the bloody knife he found by Dame Constance. Alas, what might she say? For very woe her wit was all away. To King Allah was told all this mischance, and eke the time, and where, and in what wise, that in a ship was founden this Constance, and here before ye have me heard devise the king's heart, for pity gan agrise, when he saw so benign a creature fall in disease and in misadventure. For as the lamb toward his death is brought, So stood this innocent before the king, This false knight that had this treason wrought, Bore her in hand that she hath done this thing. But natheless there was great murmuring among the people, That say they cannot guess that she had done so great a wickedness. For they had seen her ever virtuous, And loving her Melgild right as her life, Of this bare witness each one in that house, Save he that her Melgild slew with his knife. This gentle king had caught a great motif of this witness, And thought he would inquire deeper into this case, The truth to lure. Alas, Constance, thou hast no champion, Nor fight canst thou not so well away, But he that starf for our redemption, And bound Satan, and yet lieth where he lay. So be thy stronger champion this day, For but Christ upon the miracle kith, Without a guilt thou shall be slain as swife. She set her down on knees, and thus she said, Immortal God that saved Suzanne from false blame, And thou merciful maid, Mary, I mean, The daughter of Saint Anne, Before whose child the angels sing Ozan, If I be guiltless of this felony, My succor be, or else shall I die. Have ye not seen some time a pale face Among a press of him that hath been lad Toward his death, where he getteth no grace, And such a color in his face hath had, Men might know him that was so bestad Amongst all the faces in that rout? So stood Constance, and looked her about. O queenes living in propriety, Duchesses, and ye ladies every one, Have some ruth of her adversity, And emperor's daughter she stood alone. She had no wight with whom to make her moan, O blood royal that standest in the dread, Far be thy friends in thy great need. This king Allah had such compassion as gentle heart is fulfilled of pity, that from his iron ran the water down, now hastily do fetch a book, quoth he, and if this knight will swear how that she this woman slew, yet will we us advise with that we will that shall be our justice. A Britain book Written with evangiles was fetched, And on this book he swore anon she guilty was, In the meanwhiles, and hand him smote Upon the neck-bone, 
that down he fell at once, right as a stone, and both his iron burst out of his face in sight of everybody in that place. A voice was heard in general audience that said, Thou hast dislandered guiltless, the daughter of holy church in high presence. Thus hast thou done, and yet hold I my peace? Of this marvel aghast was all the press, As mazed folk they stood every one, For dread of reek, save Constance alone. Great was the dread, and eke the repentance of them that bade wrong suspicion upon this saily innocent Constance, and for this miracle in conclusion, and by Constance's meditation the king, and many another in that place, converted was, thanked be Christ's grace. This false knight was slain for his untruth by judgment of Allah hastily, and yet Constance had of his death great ruth, and after this Jesus of his mercy made Allah wed full solemnly, this holy woman that is so bright and sheen, and thus hath Christ he made Constance a queen. But who was woeful, if I shall not lie, of this wedding, but Donegild, and no mo the king's mother, full of tyranny? Her thought, her cursed heart, would burst in two. She would not that her son had done so, her thought it despite that he should take so strange a creature unto his make. Me list not of the chaff, nor of the stray, Make so long a tale as of the corn, What should I tellen of the royalty of this marriage, Or which course goes before who bloweth in a trump or in a horn? The fruit of every tale is for to say, They eat and drink and dance and sing and play. They go to bed, as it was skill and right, For though that wives be full of holy things, They must take in patience at the night Such manner necessaries as be pleasings to folk That have e wedded them with rings, And lay a light their holiness aside, As for the time it may no better be tied. On her he got a knave child anon, and to a bishop, and to his constable eke, he took his wife to keep, when he is gone, to Scotland ward, his foeman for to seek. Now fair Constance, that is so humble and meek, so long is gone with child, till that still she held her chamber, abiding Christ's will. The time is come, a knave and child she bear, Mauritius at the front stone they him call. This constable doth forth come a messenger, And wrote unto his king that clept was all. How that this blissful tiding is befall, And other tidings speedful for to say, He hath the letter, and forth he goeth his way. This messenger, to do his advantage, Unto the king's mother rideth swithe, And saluteth her full flare in his language. Madam, quote he, Ye may be glad and blithe, And thank God on hundred thousand scythe. My lady queen hath child without doubt, To joy and bliss of all this realm about. Lo, here is the letter sealed of this thing, That I must bear with all haste I may. If ye will aught unto your son the king, I am your servant, both night and day. 
Donna Gid answered, And now at this time nay, but here I will with all night thou take thy rest. To-morrow will I say thee what me lest. This messenger drank sadly ale and wine, and stolen where his letters privily out of his box, where he slept as a swine, and counterfeited was full subtly. Another letter wrote full sinfully unto the king direct of this matter, from his constable, as ye shall after hear. This letter said the queen delivered was of so horrible a fiend-like creature that in the castle none so hardy was that any while she durst therein endure. The mother was an elf by adventure, become by charms or by sorcery, and every man hated her company. Woe was this king when this letter had seen, but to no wight he told his sorrows sore. But with his own hand he wrote again, Welcome the son of Christ for evermore. To me, that I am now learned in this lore, Lord, welcome be thy lust and thy presence, my lust. I put all in thine ordinance. Keeps this child, albeit foul or fair, And eke my wife unto mine homecoming. Christ, when him list, may send to me an heir, More agreeable than this to my liking. This letter be he sealed, privily weeping, Which to the messenger was taken soon, And forth he went, there is no more to doom. O messenger, full filled of drunkenness, Strong is thy breath, thy limbs falter I, And thou betrayest all secretness, Thy mind is lorn, thy janglest as a jay, Thy face is turned in a new array, Where drunkenness reigneth in any rout, There is no counsel, hid without doubt. O Donegild, I have no English dine unto thy malice and thy tyranny, and therefore to the fiend I thee resign, let him indict for all thy treachery. Fie, manish, fie, O nay, by God I lie, fie, fiend-like spirit, for I dare well tell, though thou here walk, thy spirit is in hell. This messenger came from the king again, and at the king's mother court he light, and she was of his messenger full fain, and pleased him in all that e'er she might. He drank and well his girdle under pight he slept, and eke he snored in this guise all night until the sun began to rise. Eft were his letters stolen every one, and counterfeited letters in this wise, the king commanded his constable anon on pain of hanging, and of high jew eyes, that ye should suffer in no manner wise constance within his regne, for to abide three days and a quarter of a tide. But in the same ship as he her fanned, her and her younger son, and all her gear, he should put and crowd her from the land, and charge her that she never eft come there. O oh, my Constance, well may thy ghost have fear, and sleeping in thy dream be in penance, when Donegild cast all this ordinance. This messenger on morrow, when he woke unto the castle, held the next away, and to the constable the letter took, 
and when his dispiteous letter say full oft he said alas and well away lord christ quoth he how may this world endure so full of sin is many a creature o mighty god if that be thy will since thou art rightful judge how may it be that thou wilt suffer innocence to spill, And wicked folk reign in prosperity? Ah, good Constance, alas, so woe is me That I must be thy tormentor, or day a shameful death. There is no other way. Wept both young and old in that place, when that the king this cursed letter sent, And Constance, with a deadly pale of face, The fourth the day toward her ship she went. But none the less she took in good intent The will of Christ, and kneeling on the strand she said, Lord, I welcome be thy son. He that kept me from the false blame, While I was in the land among us you, He can keep me from harm and eke from shame In the salt sea, although I see not how, As strong as ever he was, he is not now. In him trust I, and in his mother dear, that is to me my sail, and eke my steer. Her little child lay weeping in her arm, And kneeling piteously to him she said, Peace, little son, I will do thee no harm. With that her kerchief off her head she braid, And over his little iron even there it laid and in her arms she lulled it full fast, and unto heaven her iron up she cast. Mother, quoth she, and maiden bright, Mary sooth is that through a woman's eggment man was lorn, and damned I to die, for which thy child was on a cross he rent, Thy blissful iron saw all his torment, Then is there no comparison Between thy woe and any woe man may sustain? Thou sawst thy child is slain before thine eyn, And yet thou lives, my little child parfait, Now, lady bright, to whom the woeful cryin, Thou glory of womanhood, Thou fair may, thou heaven for refuge, bright star of the day, rue on my child that of thy gentleness ruest on every rueful in distress. O little child, alas, what is thy guilt that never wroughtest sin as yet party? Why will thine hard father have thee split, O mercy, dear constable, quoth she, And let my little child here dwell with thee, And if thou darest not save him from blame, So kiss him once in his father's name. Therewith she looked backward to the land, And said, Farewell, husband ruthless. And up she rose, and walked down the strand, Toward the ship, her following all the press. And ever she prayed her child to hold his peace, And took her leave, and with an holy intent She blessed her, and to the ship, she went. Victualled was the ship, it is no dread, abundantly for her a full long space, and other necessities that should need, for she had enough, harried be God's grace. 
For wind and weather almighty God purchase, And bring her home, I can no better say, But in the sea she driveth forth her way. Allah the king came home soon after this Unto his castle, of the which I told, And asked where his wife and his child is, the constable gan about his heart feel cold, And plainly all the matter he him told, As ye have heard, I can tell it no better, And shewed the king his seal, and eke his letter, And said, Lord, as ye commanded me on pain of death, So have I done certain, must ye be know, and tell it flat and plain, From night to night in what place he hath lain, And thus, by wit and subtle inquiring, Imagined was by whom this harm gan spring. The hand was known that had the letter wrote, and all the venom of that cursed deed, But in what wise, certainly, I know not. The fact is this, that Allah out of dread His mother slew, that may men plainly read, For that she traitor was to legiance, Thus ended old Donegild with mischance. The sorrow that this Allah night and day Made for his wife and for his child also, There is no tongue that it tell may, But now will I again to Constance go, That floated in the sea in pain and woe Five year and more as like Christ's son, Ere that her ship approacheth to the land. Under an heathen castle at the last, Of which the name in my text I not find, Almighty God that saved all mankind Have on Constance and her child some mind, That fallen is in heathen hand eftsoon In point to spill, as I shall tell you soon. Down from the castle comes there many a wight To Garin on this ship and on Constance, But shortly from the castle on a night The lord is steward, God give him mischance, A thief that had reigned our creance Came to the ship alone, And said he would her layman be, Whether she would or nood. Woe that this wretched woman then begone, Her child cried, and she cried piteously. But blissful Mary helped her right anon, For with her struggling well and mightily The thief fell overboard all suddenly, And in the sea he drenched for vengeance, And thus hath Christ unwemmed kept Constance. O foul lust of luxury, lo thine end, Not only that thou faintest manna's mind, But verily thou wilt his body shend. The end of thy work, or of thy lustes blind, Is complaining, how many may men find, That not for work sometimes, but for the intent, To do this sin, be either slain or shent. How may this weak woman have the strength Her to defend against this renegade? O Goliath unmeasurable of length, How mighty David made thee so mate, So young, and of armor so desolate! How durst he look upon thy dreadful face? Well may men see it was but God's grace. Who gave Judith courage or hardiness to slay him, Holofrens, in his tent, And to deliver out of wretchedness the people of God? I say for this intent that right as God's spirit of vigor sent to them, 
and saved them of mischance, so sent he might and vigor to Constance. Forth went her ship throughout the narrow mouth of Jubalter and Septe driving all way, sometime west and sometime north and south, and sometime east, full many a weary day, till Christ's mother, blessed be she, I, had shaped through her endless goodness to make an end of all her heaviness. Now let us stint of Constance but a throw, and speak we of the Roman emperor, that out of Syria had by letters know the slaughter of Christian folk, and dishonor done to his daughter by a false traitor, I mean the cursed wicked Sudaness, that at the feast let slay both more and less. For which this emperor had sent anon his senator with royal ordinance, and other lords God wot many a one on Syrians to take high vengeance. They burn and slay and bring them to mischance full many a day. But shortly this is the end. Homeward to Rome they shaped them to wend. This senator repaired with victory to Romeward, sailing full royally, and met the ship driving, as saith the story, in which Constance sat full piteously, and nothing knew he what she was, nor why she was in such array, nor she will say of her estate, although that she should day. He brought her unto Rome, and to his wife. He gave her, and her younger son also, and with the senator she led her life. Thus can Our Lady bring out of woe woeful Constance, and many another woe, and longer time she dwelled in that place, in holy works ever, as was her grace. The senator's wife her aunt was, for all that she knew her never the more, I will no longer tarry in this case, but to King Allah, whom I spake of yore, that for his wife he wept and sighed sore, I will return and leave, I will, Constance, under the senator's governance. King Allah, which that had his mother slain upon a day, fell in such repentance, that if I shortly tell it shall and plain, to Rome he came to receive his penitence, and put him in the Pope's ordinance in high and low, and Jesus Christ besought, forgive his wicked works that he had wrought. The fame anon throughout the town is born, how Allah king shall come on pilgrimage by harbingers that went him before, for which the senator was the usage, rode him again, and many of his lineage, as well to show his high magnificence, as to do any king a reverence. Great cheer did this noble senator to King Allah's, and to him also. Each of them did the other proud, and so befell that in a day or two this senator did to King Allah go, to feast, and shortly, if I shall not lie, Constance's son went in his company. Some men would say, at request of Constance, this senator had led this child to feast. I may not tell in every circumstance, be as be may, there was he at the least. But sooth is this, that at his mother's hest, before Allah, during their meetest space, the child stood, looking at the king's face. This Allah king had of this child great wonder, 
and to the senator he said, Anon, whom is that fair child that standeth yonder? I not, quoth he, by God and by St. John, a mother he hath, but father hath he none, that I of what, and shortly in a stone, he told to Allah how the child was found. But God wot, quoth this senator also, so virtuous a liver in all my life. I never saw as she, nor heard of mo of worldly woman, maiden, widow, or wife. I dare well say she had a liver, a knife through her breast, than be a woman's wick. There is no man could bring her to that prick. Now was this child as like to Constance as possible is a creature to be. This Allah had the face in remembrance of Dame Constance, and thereon mused he, If the child's mother were aught she, that was his wife, and privily he sight, and sped him from the table that he might. Parfait, thought he, phantom is in mine head. I ought to dream of skilful judgment that in the salt sea my wife is dead, and afterwards he made this argument. Why won't I, if that Christ have hither sent my wife by sea, as well as he her sent to my country from Venice that she went? And afternoon home with the senator went Allah for to see this wondrous chance. This senator did Allah great honor, and hastily he sent after Constance, but trust her well, her list not to dance, when that she wist therefore was that sond unneth upon her feet she might stand. When Allah saw his wife, fair he her gret, and wept, that it was Ruth for to see, for at the first looked he on her set, he knew well verily that it was she, and she, for sorrow, as dumb stood as a tree, so was her heart shut in her distress, when she remembered his unkindness. Twice she swooned in his own sight. He wept, and him excused piteously. Now God, quoth he, and all his hollows bright, so wisely on my soul have mercy, that of your harm as guiltless am I as is Maurice, my son, so like your face else may the fiend me fetch out of this place. Long was the sobbing and the bitter pain, ere that their woeful hearts might cease. Great was the pity, for hear them plain, though which plaints gan their woe increase. I pray you all my labor to release. I may not tell all their woe till to-morrow. I am so weary for to speak of sorrow. But finally, when that the sooth is wist that Allah guiltless was of all her woe, I trow an hundred times have they kissed, and such a bliss is there betwixt them two, that save the joy that lasteth evermore, there is none like that any creature hath seen, or shall see, while the world may dure. Then prayed she her husband meekly, in that relief of her long piteous pine, that he would pray her father specially, that of his majesty she would incline to vouchsafe some day with him to dine. She prayed him to eke, that he should by no way unto her father no word of her say. 
Some men would say now that the child Maurice did this message unto the emperor, but, as I guess, Allah was not so nice to him that is so sovereign of honor. As he that is of Christian folk the flower send any child but better dis to deem, he went himself, and so it may well seem. This emperor hath granted gently to come to dinner, as he him besought, and well read I, he looked busily, upon this child, and on his daughter thought. Allah went to his inn, and as him ought arrayed for his feast in every wise, and far forth as his cunning may suffice. The morrow came, and Allah gan him dress, and eke his wife the emperor to meet. And forth they rode in joy and in gladness, and when she saw her father in the street, she lighted down and fell before his feet. Father, quoth she, your younger child Constance is now full clean out of your remembrance. I am your daughter, your Constance, quoth she, that will whom ye have sent into Siri. It am I, father, that in the salt sea was put alone and damned for to die. Now, good father, I your mercy cry, send me no more into none heatheness, but thank my lord here of his kindness. Who can the piteous joy tellen all betwixt them three, since they be thus ye met? But of my tale make an end I shall. The day goes fast, I will no longer let. These glad folk to dinner be ye set, in joy and bliss at meat I let them dwell, a thousandfold well more than I can tell. This child Maurice was since then emperor, made by the Pope, and lived Christianly to Christ's church, did he great honor. But I let all his story pass by, of Constance is my tale especially. In the old Roman guestes men may find Maurice's life. I bear not it in mind." This King Allah, when he his time say, with his Constance, his holy wife, so sweet, to England, are they come in the right way? Where did they live, in joy and in quiet? But little while it lasted, I you hate. Joy of this world, for time will not abide. From day to night it changeth as the tide. Who lived ever in such delight one day that him not moved either conscience or ire or talent or some kind of fray, envy or pride or passion or offence, I say, but for this end this sentence, that little while in joy or in pleasance lasted the bliss of Allah with Constance. For death that takes of high and low his rent, When passed was a year even as I guess, Out of this world this King Allah he hent, For whom Constance had full great heaviness. And let us pray that God his soul bless, And Dame Constance finally to say, Toward the town of Rome went her way. To Rome is come this holy creature, and findeth there her friends whole and sound. Now she is scaped all her ventures, and when that with her father hath he found, down on her knees hath fallen she to ground, weeping for tenderness in heart blithe, she heareth God an hundred thousand sighs. In virtue and in holy alms deed they liven all, and ne'er asunder wend, till death departed them, this life they lead. 
And fare now well, my tale is at an end. Now Jesus Christ, that of his might, may send joy after woe, govern us in his grace, and keep us all that be in this place. So ends the Man of Law's Tale.